All right, welcome back and congratulations. You've now reached section two of PHP for beginners. So yes, yeah, section one was all about the initial fundamentals. And granted, I get it. There's plenty of things we haven't yet reviewed, like classes and objects and object-oriented programming. But yeah, at least the initial fundamentals, I hope, should now be part of your skill set. So now section two is all about figuring out, at least initially, what it looks like to build a website or an application using PHP and MySQL. So let's get started. Now, to make things a little easier on the eye, and also so that we have something to work with, I think we should start with an existing HTML uh, boilerplate or skeleton. So with that in mind, I'm going to grab a component from tailwindui.com. Uh, whether you're familiar with this or not, you don't need to worry. There's, there's no prerequisite here. All I'm doing is browsing their components to find a pretty stacked uh, HTML skeleton. So notice if you're following along, yeah, I just want something like this, uh, an initial bit of practical HTML that we can experiment with. And you'll see this happens to be one of their free uh, components. So I will click on this here. And now if I switch back to my editor, let's go into my view. And within the body tag, I'm going to paste all of that in like that. OK, so now we have some markup to work with. We have a bunch of CSS utility classes here. And again, if you're not familiar with any of this, trust me, don't be afraid. You don't need to worry about it. You're not going to be tested on it. It's just a quick way to have something pretty in the browser. OK, so now the only remaining step before we check it out in the browser is to follow the instructions here and then import the Tailwind uh, CSS. So notice we need to add these classes to our HTML tag. So I will do that now class and paste that in. And then on the body tag, we need a class of H full. That stands for height full or height is 100%. OK, that's it. And then let's import the CSS. And ironically, we do that via a script tag. Uh, cdn.tailwindcss.com. All right, so yeah, let's give it a shot. I come back to Firefox, we give it a refresh. And yeah, you see what I mean? Now we have something pretty attractive to work with. And more importantly, our template has a, a number of sections, so to speak. So we have a navigation area. We have a header area. We have a main content section. So this will very closely resemble the, the sorts of websites that you actually build on your own time. OK, let's get back to work. All right, so let's see. And yeah, again, don't spend too much mental energy trying to figure out what's going on here unless you want to. The important bits are that we have a navigation section, and I will hide that with Command minus. We have a header section, which corresponds to what you see here. And then at the very bottom, we have a main content section. So notice we have little notes, replace with your content. All right. Hello. Welcome to the home page. OK, come back to Firefox, give it a refresh, and yeah. This is what you'd expect. OK, but now I want to, of course, have links. So if we go up to the navigation section, let's see. Um, we have a dashboard, team, projects, calendar, and reports. So if we have a look, of course, that corresponds here. OK, why don't we change dashboard to home? And that will take us to, well, forward slash the home page. So if I come back and refresh, sure enough, that has been updated. Let's do the same thing for a couple others. So we'll say, how about uh, we have one for home, one for about us, and that will link to how about slash about. And then we'll come back to that in a moment. And then I'll have another one that ideally would link to slash contact. All right, let's have a look. Come back to Firefox and give it a refresh. And there we go. OK, so the next step is let's create an about page. So how do we do that? Well, let's see. We have index.php, and I've removed all the variables from the previous episodes. But, but in real life, you probably have some, some data gathering to do. At the moment, it just requires a view. So why don't we do the same thing for about? About.php will load a view called about.view.php. And to do that, at least initially, I'm going to duplicate index.view.php, and we'll call it about.view.php. 
All right, and yeah, as I'm doing this, hopefully alarm bells are going off in your head. Because think about it, what about when we have 20 different pages? Am I duplicating this mass of HTML 20 different times? Well, if I did, I'd end up with a, a sort of n plus one problem where let's say you need to change or tweak the navigation bar or import a script. Well, think about it. You'd have to do it for however many pages are in your site, which clearly is not something we want. But yeah, baby steps. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom here. Hmm, yeah. We'll say now you are on the about page. Okay, so let's have a look here. Okay, so yeah, we're on the home page. Let's try clicking on about and mm -hmm, the address bar updates, but notice it still says welcome to the home page, which is weird. That doesn't seem right. So whenever you're in doubt, of course, just click that refresh button a bunch of times and cross your fingers, but <laughs> no dice, it doesn't make a difference. Okay. Well, if we have a look, it is about.php. So yeah, let's give that a shot. Come back, about.php. Aha, it works. Okay, so now we're starting to learn something about how uh, PHP's built-in server works. And it looks like if we request something that it can't match or identify, it'll defer to the default. And remember, index.php, that file name is always the default. Okay. But yeah, it would be nice if I could just do slash about. I don't always want to add the extension here. Well, I'll show you how to get around that, but for now, it's a little bit, just a little bit above our pay grade. But I promise I'll show you how to do that in a handful of episodes. So for now, let's stick with the full file name. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go back to index.php. I'm sorry, our view. And here's our navigation bar. And yeah, it sounds like I need to update this to slash about.php. And whenever we do create a contact uh, file, that would be contact.php. Okay, and now notice I have to do the exact same thing for the about page. So update that. Yeah, so clearly imagine making a change like this across 20 different views. It would be a nightmare, right? And we can't allow it. So I'm only duplicating myself once before we solve this problem. Okay, so come back to Firefox, give it a refresh. And now if I click on about, it takes me to slash about.php and we do see the corresponding page. If I wanna go back, that works as well. So let's finish up by doing one more for contact. So I'll duplicate this again, contact.php. We'll do the same thing for contact.view. We will begrudgingly duplicate that HTML just for a few moments. And then down here at the bottom, where are we? Contact us. And then did I update the view? No, gotta do that here. All right, so yeah, let's cross our fingers. Here's the home page, and pay attention to the copy here, the about page and the contact page. So now we can even uh, update the headers. So let's do this in index.php. And yeah, notice to go through all of this HTML is just a slog, it's a nightmare. I can't even find it. Where's the header? There we go. All right, so this is our home page. I'll do the same thing for about, search for header. All right, maybe about us, and then to contact, contact us. Okay, give it a refresh, and now it's a little bit more clear. Home, about, contact. But also notice real quick that the, the little pill background remains on the home section. And that's because those styles have been hard-coded. So yeah, if we were to inspect this, let's have a look. Where's our navigation area? All right, so notice, hmm, what are we doing here? So yeah, first up we have aria current, that's for accessibility. It's a way to signal to screen readers what the current page is. And notice that the styling is a little bit different. So we have background gray, and then 900 is basically how gray is it? So you'll see, yep, there's a background, but none of these other ones have a background. So yeah, yet again, this would be a situation if you were building a static HTML site where you would just have to deal with all of this crap. You know, you'd have to uh, manually update every file and say, okay, now here, uh, is this the only difference? Yeah, I think so. So now this would be for about. And then this one would be uh, text gray 300 and then hover is gray 700. I think that's right. Come back to about, 
and now we can see that uh, move around. And in fact, I'm sorry, I spelled gray wrong. There we go. And then we do the same thing for contact. So yeah, kill me. This is just kind of a, a painful thing to do here. We'll update this. Now move it down to the contact styles and then update this once again to text. Gray is 300 and then hover. When you hover over it, it becomes a darker gray. That's basically what's happening here. Refresh. Yes, yeah, so notice Tailwinds gives me a way to, to quickly style things without updating a dedicated CSS file. So if you're interested, definitely check it out. But if you're not interested, you don't need to worry about any of this stuff. Okay, so home, about, contact. Yeah, it works, but I promise you there's a better way to organize and structure these things. So I will show you that in the next episode.